This here broke. This rod attaches to the eccentric. It's on the crankshaft and it pushes down on a cylinder and lifts up the blade. This is part of the oil lift system. You can see this is already bent here. And I don't think it was supposed to be bent at all. So it looks like I'm going to be making that before we can get started on the video. So let's go out to the forge and get that done. So I need to forge this end on a piece of steel. Oh, screw it. Just use it. Yep, there we go. That's a good transition. I drew up the part that we need here. Got a chunk of 1045. I know it's 1045 because it is. Heat this end up, beat that end into it, and I'll machine the rest. Because this is 13 16th OD 1045. So, go to the forge. It's a little late right now, so we'll do it in the morning. And it's morning. Time to work on the part. Part's been forged, did a little bit of grinding to it, lopped off the end in the bandsaw. Now I'm going to throw it in the lathe and turn down this 5 inch section to 5 eighths. I'm lonesome but happy, rich but I'm broke, and the good Lord knows the reason. I'm just a cowpoke from Cheyenne to Douglas. The range is I know, cause I drift with the wind. No one cares where I go. Now that it's been turned on the lathe, the straight section here and the section that'll be threaded, now I just need to put a hole in it, 7 16 and then I'll ream it with a burnishing reamer. We get that done, and then I'll thread it, and heat treat it, temper it, and do all that. Hole drilled, now I got my favorite tap or die wrench out, screw plate. Now I just got to thread this for 5 8 national course. And it's now heat treated and tempered, and also I seasoned it with peanut oil to give it sort of the black, darker look. Now it goes on the hacksaw. Well, let's see if our fix works. So now that this hacksaw is sorted out, I did a bunch of adjusting, took a bunch of test cuts uh, after I replaced that part. Why should you buy a power hacksaw? What are the benefits of this archaic machine? Uh, is it obsolete? Is it useless in the modern sense? Well, in my opinion, no. This hacksaw and many others like it, they're cheap to run, they're cheap to buy, and they cut steel very quickly and very efficiently. They're really, really good with thick steels, with large sections, with solid, maybe forklift tine, hammer billets. Uh, you're made cutting big dies, things like that. That's what a hacksaw is good at. A hacksaw is not good at cutting structural elements like this. I cut two of these, two of them stacked up like this. A cut like that, it took me 15 minutes. That's quite a long time to wait for this saw, in my opinion at least, quite a long time for it to cut a structural element, especially when you consider the fact that it cut forklift tine, two inch by six inch forklift tine, 40, hardened 4140. It cut that in 20 minutes. It cuts thick steels so much faster than it cuts structural steels I don't quite know why, but it does. These saws 
they're great if you're cutting if you don't have a lot of money firstly you don't want to be spending lots of money on bandsaw blades that break if you're cutting lots of weird materials these saws great this blade if I had to buy it new uh, from like brand new from Starrett it would probably cost me $30 to my door 30 to 40 now that's not terrible considering the amount of work that one of these blades can do I bought I was really lucky I got 40 of them for $80 I got 20 of these Atkins silver steel 4 TPI 7 inch or 17 inch blades they're one and a quarter inch thick Atkins made in the USA of course new old stock I also got recently a batch of Cape Well Technite blades. These I guess are high speed steel, they're the same specs as the uh, Atkins, 17 inch, 4 TPI, 1 and a quarter inch thick. They have the exact same grind on them too, so I don't know. Maybe they're the same blade but a different color. Doesn't matter to me. Those blades will probably last me a decade. The last blade I had on here before it snapped, cutting thin tubing, which I shouldn't have been doing, um, it went through a lot of forklift time and a lot of uh, hardened 4140. Now these hacksaws, they're cheap, cheap to run, they cut thick steel fairly quickly, especially when you compare them to Harbor Freight band saws. Cut thick steel pretty quickly, they're very, very accurate, which means that you waste less material, you don't have to clean it up as much. This one hardly leaves a burr even, unless the blade is fairly dull. Um, those are all the advantages. The only real disadvantage to a hacksaw like this, in my opinion, um, is the fact that you really need to be a machinist or know a machinist if you want to buy one of these. These hacksaws, they're all fairly old, and so they've really been through the ringer. This machine, I need to make some new guides for it, and I need to do a little bit of boring on the connecting rod. Now, if you're not a machinist, these tasks can be done. They can be done. But it's best if you allow someone with a milling machine and a lathe to do these things. Um, yeah, I could sit there and make new guides out of just cutting up little strips of bronze and they work, but not as good as milled ones. I could sit there and use a drill bit to bore out the connecting rod, push in bushing, but not as good as a bored hole. These machines, in my opinion, would really benefit small shop owners. If you're just getting into machining, just getting into forging, or even if uh, you've been doing it a long time, a saw like this can really be a benefit to you. Now there are certain things to consider when you want to buy a power hacksaw. The first thing you should look for is obviously condition. Uh, that's really with any machine. If it looks broke, it is broke. If it looks like it has missing pieces, it probably does. But one really, really critical thing to look out for with these hacksaws is a lift system for the backstroke. And this saw, it cuts on pull stroke. So whenever it pushes, it needs to lift the blade. If you find a saw and it doesn't do that, unless it's really, really cheap or it's in going to the scrapyard, you could save it and pass it on to someone who could really use it, really pass on those saws. Without an oil or without a lift system, these saws, they, the blades, they wear out, they don't do as well, they don't cut as nice, they're just, they need a lift system. The best brands to look for would be Marvel saws and Racine saws. I also know uh, Keller and Sawmaster are good brands. There's a couple of them. Do your research on whatever you find. This one is a W. Robertson, which seems to be a very good brand. They all had this uh, oil lift system. That's one big thing to look out for. And another would be capacity. Those six by six saws, I would probably try to find one that's bigger than six by six. This one is eight by eight. Um, yeah, six by six is a pretty good capacity, but it's, you run into situations where you're cutting angle and you're, you're cutting angles, you're cutting weird stuff. You, you really want more capacity than just six by six. You go to buy blades, you know, find the right 
TPI for your blades. These blades here, they're all four TPI, which means that I should really never be cutting anything under three quarters of an inch because you want three teeth engaged with your work. Find the coarsest blade that you can because that will cut faster in thick material. If you're wanting to cut thin tubing with your hacksaw, which firstly, why would you want to do that? Get a bandsaw if you're going to cut thin tubing or structural elements. Uh, these hacksaws are good for thick, not for thin. But get, if you want to, if you have limited space, get a higher TPI blade for smaller material. That's what they're meant for. This blade cuts very quickly. If I were to get a 10 TPI or an 18 TPI, uh, it would just slow this saw down quite a bit. There's a lot less pressure, or a lot more pressure per tooth on the work. There's a lot more room for the chip to build up. Just a lower TPI is better for thicker material. And to close out this video and to end it, I'd like to issue a small challenge to anyone with a metal cutting machine. If you have a band saw, if you have a hack saw, if you have a cold cut saw, an abrasive saw, time your cuts and put it down in the comments. Say what section it is, like a, this here is four by four by three eighths inch wall angle iron, what it's made out of, and the time. And also, of course, the saw, what TPI blade you have. I'll do the same down in the comments. I've cut all sorts of steel with this, but I'll just focus on two inch round bar, two by six fork with tine, and this um, angle iron here that I have. And I'd love to compare the different times of different saws in different materials. I, I'm probably gonna take a couple of test cuts in my uh, little red Harbor Freight band saw and see how it compares, cut up some two inch round and see if that little saw can beat the five minutes that this saw can, or can cut it in five minutes like this saw can. Those were the benefits of the power hacksaw. They're cheap to buy, cheap to run. They cut thick steel very accurately, very quickly. They're great machines, and I think anybody who might benefit from one should really consider it and look around your area. You might find one for super cheap. You might even find one for free. It's not unheard of to for a shop owner to have some old hacksaw lying in the corner and they just want to get rid of it so they can build, get some room. So if you liked that video and you want to see more, please like and subscribe. I'm going to be posting more about screw press that I'm building and a couple of other projects. Uh, the steel that I'm cutting here is actually for the hydraulic forging press. All of this uh, angle iron is, I'm going to be cutting off the sliding element, the part that goes up and down, off of the press and I'm going to be building a new one that's a lot stronger. The one that I have, it flexes a bunch and it really, it doesn't ruin my work, but it makes it difficult to work with. So look out for that video. Again, thank you for watching and have a good day.